Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and today I am bringing you a new ship. It is a drone carrier. In fact, it's sort of a drone commander as well. It's not just designed to carry drones, it's also a drone itself, as well as the fact that it can actually carry about seven people total. Exactly seven people total. So you can have a pretty big crew to command almost all the drones it can carry. And I actually have two versions of the ship. I have a large one, and I have a small one. And right now we're flying past all the different construction phases I had. I made a copy every now and again when I thought maybe I was changing something a little too much, or wasn't sure I was going in the right direction, and I always ended up deleting ones I wasn't too happy with, and until I ended up with this ship right here. And originally, you can see this ship was supposed to be oriented like you're seeing it right now with a bunch of landing bays at the top and the bottom. But I found out as I was working on it that it looked a lot cooler like that. So that's a, my final design right there. It's got a lot of spots for drones. It's got eight on the top and the bottom, or at least on its right wing and left wing as we finally decided to go with it. And we can fly up to here and I actually show you its inner workings before we actually go ahead and take it for a test drive or anything. So here's the finished one as it's supposed to look. And up here, you can see its inner workings, which you sort of already got a glimpse of. So you can see that along the top, we have the main command seat with three controller seats behind that. On the bottom, actually, we have three more controller seats, but you can't really see them. It's exactly like the ones on the top. This ship actually has like a weapons armament, so it's got two Gatling guns right there on each side, connected into a conveyor system that goes straight down the whole middle of the ship. Off to the sides, it has conveyors shooting out and bending up and down to give it all of its connection points so all the ships can refuel and get all sorts of ammo or anything they need stored inside the ship. Also, this connector here has two missile pods right in the middle of it, as well as this one. This was, of course, done using that small one block wide connector piece in between the missiles. Carrying down the actual shaft of the center of the ship, the main conveyor, we do have a medium storage container at the start of each of the splits that go off to the store, like, connecting areas, and then in between all those, we have a reactor, which is connected into the small ports on the sides of each of those medium storage containers. So we got eight storage containers in total to store all the ammo and spare uranium or anything that would be needed for all the drones connecting. And of course, for the ammo in this ship, of course, the way they're plugged in, you can actually transfer missiles through them into the ship. So you can have a missile ship and not just Gatling ships. And then in the center here, because we do have the four-way connection blocks, we also use the small ports on the one side of them to plug in a bunch of air canisters on the four on the top, and there's four on the bottom because this is a mirrored ship up and down, left and right. Carrying on from there, we also have these metal T-junctions that you're probably seeing here. I call them T-junctions. They're more like crosses at this point. They are usually connected into the side walls, but if we were to look under them, you'll actually be able to see that we have gyroscopes stuck to the bottom of all these to allow our ship to turn, and there's usually actually a little small air gap right here before the top piece of metal, allowing those to be armored and pretty much separate. Right here behind the final cockpit, we have its remote control block. Like I said, this ship can be controlled as a drone itself, followed by its main antenna. And then actually, if we fly down here, you can see we have its auxiliary antenna as well, which you can turn on from the main cockpit with a single button press. I'll just fly through here to give you an idea of what it actually looks like when it's all sealed up. And you see the thrusters are down at the bottom, everything else. So there we go. That's the inner workings. I'll fly back to the finished version right here, just so you can get another look at how all that fits inside there. You can see how it's all closed up pretty nice. All the cockpits are accessed through these little one block wide openings, so a player can easily hop in there without their worrying about their cockpit being instantly shot out. All these cockpits are also, as you probably guessed, plugged in from the base with the large connection port, so they will all have oxygen as well, and of course energy. I, even the front cockpit at, oops, sorry, boy, that's a silly spot to fly through. Even the front cockpit right there is also plugged into the large connection port at the back. So all the cockpits will have O2. You can even see that I did put a little bit of an arc down here. So you, when you're looking in, it's a little bit easier to see a spot to click. That does mean bolts can get to the cockpit a little bit easier, but not too much. Okay, so that's that for the cockpits. Of course, you've already seen the inner workings of the wings, but we'll fly out to them and see that these are our braking thrusters. We've got four large ones on each side. 
that allows the ship to break pretty damn easily. And then if we were to fly around the side, of course, we have a huge line of little thrusters here. Same amount are actually on the top right here above all that working machinery and, of course, on the bottom. And then at the back of the ship, we have a fair few thrusters. Same amount on the wings, but, of course, we got four more right in the center. And then we have this huge thing sticking out, which I didn't show on in the interior view. Actually has conveyors going through it to a main docking port, so you could dock this whole ship with a station very easily. And it's far enough away from the thrusters that you don't have to worry about it burning up your station when you're trying to dock it. Overall, I'm extremely pleased with this ship. Even though I do think maybe in future versions I'll space out the connectors a little bit to allow larger drones and other ships to be able to dock more easily. Now I do have a variation of this ship, a small version right here, and you can see it's pretty much the same exact thing as a large one, except for I've gone ahead and removed some of the blocks at the front and replaced them with small brake thrusters, because of course I removed the wings. And then along the sides, instead of having the connectors on the wings there, just right here along the sides. And I had to stick little thrusters in to a convenient spot right there to allow the brake. And then at the back, it's all the same. It's just these little tiny, well, I say little tiny, these four large thrusters to propel it along, but it's a much smaller ship. Its inner workings, if we were to fly up here, are pretty much exactly the same. Once again, you got six cockpit, seven cockpits. One is the main cockpit right here for piloting, just like the other one. And then the interior workings are all exactly the same, except for no missile launchers on this one. It just goes straight from the medium container to the connector. So let's go ahead and actually take these ships for a spin real quick. That way you can get an idea of how they handle on their own. And then we'll fly up to actually laden ones that I have way up there. So if I turn on my UI, you can see we have a bunch of drones stuck to those ships up there. So Let's hop into this one right here really quickly now. There we go. And of course, you'll notice right away that, oh dear God, <laughs> I can't see anything. Just like I said, this is a drone ship. So we press three and now we're in the camera view. I have my camera mod on, which you can find in the description below, just because I prefer to have a clearer view than the fuzzy one that's in the normal game. And you can see, reversing the ship, it moves pretty quickly. Going forward, it moves pretty quickly. Overall, the ship handles very well, the small one especially. So we can buzz it around without any real problem. We can press T to exit that and just press V so we can actually see what the ship looks like while we're flying about. And you can see, even though it's got mainly little tiny thrusters to turn it around a lot of times, they work pretty well. And it's a, it handles well, yeah. Also, we can of course go ahead and fire those Gatling guns and see them take out the front. So this ship, even though it would be sitting at a distance, could defend itself and provide some fire support. What else do we have for this? We got its number four button for auxiliary. That way, if your one antenna is taken out and somehow your cockpits are still intact, you can turn on an auxiliary antenna. I should have probably put it at the back, but it's hard to find a good spot for it back there, so I just stuck it right there. So anyway, that's this little ship. Let's go ahead and fly back to the larger one over there, shall we? And take that one for a... Oh dear quick spin, uh, aiming it back up. It's a pretty nice looking ship. I'm really, really happy with it. So let's get back there now. There we go. Back into this area. And like I said, it handles pretty well. Jesus, it actually handles better than I thought. Of course, by the way, if you hop into these other cockpits here, they don't really have any buttons set up. And well, autopilot enabled for some reason. I actually don't know why. Maybe it's because when you get in a pilot, oh, apparently when you get in a seat, that isn't set to be the main control seat because these other cockpits are not set to be the control seat. It might turn on the autopilot. Let's just go ahead and find the control me thing. Autopilot actually isn't turned on, so not quite sure what that's about. Maybe it tries to trigger, but since it's not set up, it's not doing anything. Let me just go ahead and find the fighter cockpit, which I can't seem to find right now. I expected it to be called fighter, but fighter showed nothing. A bit strange that six through eight aren't showing anything right here on the right, but main ship cockpit main cockpit is being showed there. I guess, of course, I can just search main cockpit and I've named it. So yeah, you can see that one's toggled on. Bit odd that. A few little things that, uh, of course, in Space Dreams always confuse one, isn't there? Okay, flying up to the other one. We'll take it for a real quick spin and hop into here. There we go. And take it off. You can see right away it doesn't feel... Well, actually, no, it still handles pretty well and accelerates pretty quick. Yep. It's got um, just the center line of thrusters, same as the other one for its up and down, left, right, but it does have a higher or quicker acceleration for forward and back. Also, you'll notice with this one, because it has the missile set up, you can see six through nine on my hotbar down below are set up for missiles, turning those on and off. Three and four are, of course, the same for camera, and then, of course, turning on the auxiliary antenna, and then two is 
the Gatling guns once again that we can fire from the ship. Please note that if you do have drones connected and you haven't shut off their weapons, they will fire these as well, fire their weapons as well when you're using this, so be cautious. So let's go ahead and switch to missiles, and of course if I fire right now, nothing's going to happen, but if I was to go ahead and switch into this mode, I'm going to turn on 6 and 8. I could have grouped them together, but I figured I'll let people choose if they want to do that or not. Let's go ahead and start firing. Nope, nope, we got to push number one to have those selected. So let's start firing. And we're going to turn on a nine and seven. So now, missiles will pretty much never stop. And really, we could have offset all these. So, yep. Now this ship can have its... It's be a perfect little weapons platform to continue bombarding a structure with a fair few missiles. And of course, it's a pretty hefty ship. It's made out of light armor because it's supposed to stay out of the combat zone. But I say it works pretty well nonetheless. And of course, with these missile launchers off to the sides, there's not as much of a risk of it actually hitting itself with these missiles. But anytime you use missiles, especially with my luck, one has to be slightly cautious as you can easily enough find a way to blow yourself up, it always seems. But yeah, as I said, this ship works pretty well as a missile platform to be used from a distance to support its drones. It's a pretty hefty fire ship, actually. Let's go ahead and switch into third person, just so you can see how it actually looks when it's firing. Disable our HUD. So yeah, you can see those missile pods I showed earlier. They work pretty damn well. Okay, so enough of that and flying it around as a weapon ship itself. Let's go ahead and actually switch back into one of the other ones that actually has drones on it, shall we? And of course, if I stop firing, the problem is that now, of course, all those weapons will be out of sync. And I don't think you can actually just tell them to reload, unfortunately. See, now they're all going to fire at the same time. A little unfortunate, but thus is life. Yeah, you see, that one was already firing. So let's go ahead, hop out of that, head to one of the drones over there that's covered in other drones. And we'll start off with the one we were just flying, this one here. You can see I've used my heavy Gatling gun drones. Unfortunately, they're so bloody big that there's not really room to fill up all of them. We could, of course, stick smaller drones on there, which I've actually done with the smaller of the drone commander ships. So let's head into this, and since we just flew it, it should be an easy enough comparison. Once again, the buttons in this one are exactly the same as the one we were just in. Let's hop in the third person, and you can see it still accelerates and handles pretty well. It's a bit more sluggish on the turn since it's got all that extra weight. Now let's go ahead and switch to our Gatling guns and fire our Gatling guns. And as I said earlier, a little bit of a problem can happen there if you have, um... Yeah, if you haven't properly set up your ships to shut down their systems. Now, let's say I wanted to control one of these little ships. Well, the best way to do it is let's control that one at the top front right. So, that's top of the ship, right side. So, so let's do RT1, oh, underscore one. So, it's right top, and it's number one. Maybe I should have had a top right one, but whatever. You get the point. So, we get, so you select that, and we say unlock. So, now that drone has been set Free. So you can see its connector there is yellow. And now when we press K, instead of it just having a few drone commander ships, now we actually see that drone. So we can go ahead, take control over it, do control. And now we can actually, uh, what, what? I think I clicked the wrong one, didn't I? No, H drone, remote control. We should have control over it, but it looks like our camera just popped the wrong thing. Let's go ahead and press three to turn on its thrusters and fly it away. Yeah, for some reason our camera didn't actually snap to anything else. It's, oh, it's still, of course, it's not going to snap to anything on Silly Sage. It's a drone, but you can see now we are controlling that drone. We can, of course, press the number one key to take control over it. And there you go. So now we're flying in that drone. Now, the number three key I did there controls its gyroscopes and its thrusters. Now, you want to shut off your thrusters when you're docking a drone with a ship like this. Otherwise, of course, when you go ahead and do some turns or, you know, press a certain direction, either the gyroscopes will help you make the turn or they'll fight against you, and the thrusters will either fight against you or they'll help you, but they might burn into your actual ship, so you want to shut those off. And ideally, I would also have had that number three button set up to disable the Gatling guns as well. Didn't quite think of that until I was already about ready to record. Didn't feel like retweaking all these ships. And of course, since if I was to press that number three button while it was still connected, it would toggle on and off all of the other ships there because they're basically copies of themselves and we don't exactly want that so let's go ahead buzz this down here where's the in proximity at the bottom can we get that unfortunately the best way to dock these ships is not from actually out there it's from right here so let's go ahead once again select that drone connect to it and now we'll just keep in our camera view here of our actual large drone commander ship fly this bugger over bring her or it down there we go 
there we go. And once again, press 3 to disable those thrusters and gyroscope, press P to lock, and there we go. And I'll just show you, if I press 3 right now, you can see it does turn all of them on. And we can go ahead and, well, first disconnect from it, and then try to fly the ship. And you can see all their thrusters there are trying to fight our movement, so not exactly ideal. you got to make sure you shut that down before you go taking them around. Anyway, that's that on how to use this little one, or this big ship here and the drones. Pretty simple and straightforward. Just remember to set your drones up like that if you're going to use this ship and probably any other ship. Really, you should have a button like I did for number three to shut off your weapons and your gyroscopes and your thrusters. Antenna, you got to be tricky with, you got to be cautious with that. The reason I don't have the antennas disabled for those is because, of course, you would have to remember to turn the antenna on before you disconnected the ship. And, of course, with all these ships being duplicates of one another, if you had uniquely named antennas, it wouldn't be a problem. But the fact that all these ships are duplicates of one another, you sort of run into a problem where if you turn on one antenna, you're going to turn them all on. Or if you turn on one antenna, they all go off. So it's a bit finicky with just duplicate ships. If you're naming each of your drones individually and making sure you're renaming their antenna so you know which one's at which port, nice and easy there. You can just have a button for that specific antenna. Just make sure you're uh, not copying that ship. Also, here's a small one, and you can see this one, I took the time to stick the micro drones on here. You could have done the same with the ship we were just at, I just didn't want to take the ages that it actually took to get those silly little buggers lined up perfectly up and down, because I didn't want them at angles at all. I actually ended up spending too much time on that, probably 20 minutes on just one side, because I got fickle. Uh, you didn't even know that. Anyway, this is the same drone we were flying away earlier, of course, of course. Let's hop in there just to show that it still pilots reasonably well. And yeah, you can see it's a much slower drone. With all that extra weight on there, it ends up being slowed down a fair bit. Again, weapons firing, if you had to be cautious with that, it could of course be used as a weapon. So you could line it up and then be like, oh, my drones are now just a big wall of guns. Might be a little difficult to aim, but you could see it being useful if maybe you find yourself, well, shot up and maybe some of your pilots didn't quite make it. So yep. Again, I'll just show you really quickly if we want to disengage one of these. It's much simpler. There's no up and down or top and bottom like the other ship. It's simple as left and right. So we can go ahead, search up connector in here. Actually, we can just search up, I believe it was like right one. Yep, R1, so much easier. I really should remove the underscores from the other ship. We can go ahead and unlock. And you can see now that one drone has been unlocked. So we can simply do the same thing we did on the other one. It now shows up in that pull-down list, and now we can have control over it, and let's go ahead and... Oh, right, turn on its reactors, its thrusters, and fly it away. There we go. So there we go. Successful! Nice and simple. Anyways, that's really it for this. I think I've shown pretty much everything. The little tiny drones there, same exact setup as these. Uh, except for I think I did actually maybe add their weapons to the disabling group. Not quite sure. But, yep, that's that. Anyway guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you didn't, I'm sorry, but I don't know. These ships, if you'd like to go ahead and use them, remember they're light armor, so they shouldn't actually be getting too close to the battlefield. They should be staying back while whoever else is in there pilots the drones into the danger zones. But if you'd like to go ahead and get your hands on these ships, you can go ahead and find them on my Steam Workshop. There should be links down in the description below. I'll have a blueprint for the large one and the small one, and hopefully before I get those blueprints up there, I'll actually go ahead and rename the connectors on the large one to be slightly more reasonable so it'll probably be top right one with no underscore in there or anything anyway guys that's it thanks so much for watching and i shall see you guys next time oh and now the sound decides to work and oh yeah i just took out my own transmitter and cockpit didn't i well done <laughs> that's it guys thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time